What is happening guys? Welcome to the video. The first home workout through this whole COVID-19 catastrophe. So I posted on my Instagram yesterday. Um, if people wanted to see me do these home workouts, I obviously have been making posts about what you can do and the options you have with most likely limited equipment. But if you want to see me actually do a little video kind of detailing how I would do things, how I would structure it, then let me know. Uh, resounding yes, I think it was 99% positive response on that. So here we are, we're gonna record that today. And then I uh, had the option of picking if you wanted to vote for an upper body or a lower body focus workout. So the first one got, I think it was like 58% upper body. So just, just squeaked out the lower body workout. So we're gonna film an upper body workout today. Um, my recommendations overall for this kind of situation, guys, is to either do full body sessions like every day or alternate between upper and lower body. Um, obviously, every day, I say loosely, depending on your skill level, depending on you know what you're used to doing at the gym, maybe you don't train every day or five, six times a week, then obviously adjust the volume as you need to. But the reason behind the frequency um, for myself, for example, doing this stuff at home, I'm not gonna be nearly as fatigued as I would normally be at the gym. Obviously, I have resistance much more from the machines and the weights at the gym and the training style that I do there. And I need the rest and recovery before training those muscle groups again. Whereas at home, because I don't have the same amount of resistance and the same amount of fatigue that's gonna be you know, built up and generated from the workout, then I can train a little bit more often. So obviously, you know, ass assess things as you need to and tailor the training more specifically to you. But these are just some guidelines that I'm gonna give for people that might be in my situation with competing or just, you know, train very, very regularly on a regular basis. Um, as far as exercise equipment goes, um, Depending on what you have, some of this stuff may work, some of this stuff may not. I've tried to make it as basic as I can. I have a couple different kinds of bands. I have a couple weighted kettlebells, and that's basically it. I really don't have a whole lot. I do have a treadmill you can see behind me there. So for cardio, um, I'm going to use that, but it's also kind of handy because I can hook bands onto it, but you don't obviously need a treadmill for that. You just need something stable. I've seen people like loop bands around their door. Um, and other stable surfaces that they have in the couch, obviously, or in the couch, in the house, could be the couch. Um, but you just need to be a little bit creative with that. As far as routine goes, this is something I've been trying to really drill into my clients, is that keep a routine. Um, some people are still working, myself included, but some people are off work completely right now. So it would be very easy, in my opinion, to kind of get into like a shitty routine, right? You just, you sleep in and then you kind of just somber up and day and you, you go on the couch and you're on your phone, you're watching TV and you haven't really done much. So I would really encourage you to keep some kind of routine, you know, obviously with your training, but outside of that as well, like get outside. We're very fortunate that it's not the dead of winter and it's minus 30 outside. Like right now it's a beautiful sunny day out. So get outside, be active, you know, do things maybe you don't normally have a chance to do, like if you're into reading or, or art or whatever, like take the opportunity to kind of put that stuff back in your life if you're used to, you know, being like me and just go, 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 go with work and all that kind of stuff. So that's just something I wanna mention. When it comes to routine with my training, every day pre-workout, I'm gonna go for a walk with my dog. Obviously, dog is not mandatory, you can go for a walk by yourself, but I know a lot of people, myself included, are so, used to the routine of like packing your gym bag and then you get in the car and then you, you're driving to the gym, you got your music going, you're sipping your pre-workout. Like it's part of the whole gym ritual. So mimic that as best you can. And by doing like going for a walk, I think that's something that will be really helpful for people. And obviously it's more activity, which is never a bad thing. So, you know, put some music on or put like a podcast, go out for a walk, 15, 20 minutes, get your heart rate up a little bit, get your body warm sip on your pre-workout and then when you come back home it'd be just like getting to the gym and you can go to work so let's get into it guys full upper body workout i'm going to just overlay footage and then we'll do a voiceover um versus me talking in between sets and trying to explain things i'm just gonna just let all the footage play from the workout and explain to you how i'm doing or why i'm doing things and how i structured it so uh sit back relax and you know get a notepad out maybe there's some stuff here you can use on your own so uh, thanks again, guys. I hope you enjoy the video. 
Okay, let's dive into the workout. First off, I know sometimes my mic picks up weird sounds, so I apologize for that. Um, but anyways, let's get into the upper body session. So as with most uh, pull workouts, so back and biceps, I start with just some lat activation work. So here we're doing uh, banded pullovers. So you can see I got it wrapped around the treadmill. So just like I would any normal uh, session, I did four sets of 20 just to really get the lats warmed up. Uh, this band was not too, too bad when it comes to resistance. I think uh, something maybe a hair looser actually wouldn't have been a bad call, but it worked. Um, so then we went into a pull down variation, which as I'm seeing, I'm almost pulling my treadmill on top of myself, which is not ideal. Um, but anyways, hooked up the stiff band onto the treadmill and did three sets of 15 reps on each side. Um, so I would do one side for 15 then switch to the other side for 15 and I only took about mm, 30 to 45 seconds in between and really trying to get those lats, you know, fired up, getting the blood in there. Um, after each set, I would do uh, both hands on and do a little bit wider grip um, for another set of 15. So you'd do both sides and then do like a, like a neutral grip almost hitting with both hands. So you do one hand, one hand, and then do both hands. That was super confusing. I apologize for that. Um, then we went into a row variation. So keeping the elbow tight, just like you would with like a standard dumbbell row. So again, using the stiff band and I got my front foot on the band to keep tension and it was pretty tight. This was a good band to do these rows. It was definitely challenging by the last few reps. And I want to mention guys, make sure you're, you're doing your best to get as close to failure as you can. Obviously, you know, using what you have might be tricky, but do your best to use intensity boosting techniques like supersets or drop sets or giant sets, any any kind of way that you can make it harder, I encourage you to do so. So just like I did with the pull downs, I'd do one side, one side, and then I would do both sides as like a burnout and did three or four sets of those. Then went into some rear delt upper back work, just like I normally would on a pull day. So we supersetted actually rear delt flies with these kettlebells, which are 15s. They look abnormally big for only weighing 15 pounds. Um, but then I would do 15 to 20 reps and superset with band pull aparts, which is an awesome exercise regardless of if you're, you know, in this situation or not. I think these are a great one uh, to have in your routine regardless, just because they're a murder on your rear delts and upper back. So I supersetted those, did three sets total, I believe. And again, just really focusing on getting a good squeeze, getting a good burnout, and really getting as close to failure as I could. Um, I did really little rest in between, maybe 30 seconds between these two exercise, like after the superset, right? Exercise one after the other was right after. Um, but the superset between each, each set, I took about 30 seconds just to really burn it out. So that was it for back. Then we went into chest. So we went to push-ups, which are an easy one for everybody to do, whether it's resisted or not, whether it's from your toes, from your knees, everybody can do push-ups. So you're seeing here, I've got the band wrapped around my upper body, which I didn't, because the band was tight, I didn't have it where I should have it. You should try to get it across your shoulders if you can, but you guys saw I had it around like my neck, which wasn't ideal, but it still provided resistance. So I did four sets total. Um, each set I did reps with the band and then dropped the band and did reps without the band. So it's just like doing a drop set where you have resistance at the beginning and then you drop the resistance in your drop set. So a couple sets of those then went into a fly movement, again, using the 15 pound kettlebells. Um, just really trying to get the blood in the chest. I did high reps here. I think I did 30 reps on each one and I went back to push-ups after the flies. So you'll see in a second I did the flies and then I did these kind of release push-ups where you come right to the floor, completely release and then finish the push-up, which was nasty. My chest was, was actually screaming pretty good by the end of it. So yeah, a press and a fly I would recommend for, for your chest, at least one form of each. Obviously that's what your pec is responsible for is is bringing your arm across your body and then doing that pressing motion. So make sure you have that in your, your programming, however you do it, whether you're using kettlebells like I did, whether you've got dumbbells or whatever you have access to really. Um, so yeah, you see me come to the floor, release the hands and then push, release the hands and push and really drive off the floor hard. Really, really exert yourself and take them, like I said earlier, right, right close to failure as you can. And then just like I did on the last set, I'd recommend taking it all the way to failure for sure on those ones and even do push-ups from your toes if you can and then drop to your knees and try to get a few more because that'll be 
That'll be a good one. That, that'd be nasty. Then went into some lateral raises, again with the kettlebells. These can be done with kettlebells, can be done with bands, and can be done really holding anything. There's no real right or wrong when it comes to this, uh, especially in this situation. So uh, four sets on the lateral raise, taking 30, 40 seconds in between sets. Again, going high reps since it's only 15 pounds. I was hanging around like 30 to 40 reps. Uh, then we went into some arm work, which was just a superset, one exercise for biceps, one for triceps. So you're seeing me use that red band again for some banded, um, it's almost like a press down with a kick, it's like a kickback press down combination here. Um, so I supersetted that with uh, curls with the kettlebells, uh, just to get some blood in the arms, obviously from doing all the rows and pull downs, the biceps have gotten some work and doing all the pressing, the triceps have gotten some work. So this was just kind of like a, a good way to finish. You're seeing me do on the kettlebells as well, almost like I would do a hammer curl. So I have my, my wrists neutral, trying to keep them perfectly straight, um, which is obviously going to hit the forearms a little bit more. So you're kind of getting that extra bang for your buck. Um, so I did three or four sets here. I don't remember exactly the number. And uh, again, just getting the, the blood in. I do enjoy the banded um, tricep work. It's really nice um, on your elbows. If you're like me and you have some joint pain once in a while or things are cracking and making sounds, then then the banded stuff, uh, even if you're training at the gym, doing some banded work before your actual working sets isn't a bad idea. And, you know, just doing some light warm up sets can be can be beneficial for you. So, yeah, then uh, just to finish up, I'd recommend doing a little bit of core on every workout just because doing extra core work is never a bad thing. So you're going to see here in a moment, uh, I did uh, just a super set of like holding the kettlebells, doing uh, single leg drops. So on this one, guys, make sure your lower back is flat. So really tuck your hips and flatten your lower back. You don't want to straighten your leg out and let your hips roll and your lower back arch off the floor. You want to keep pressing uh, pressing down on the floor with your lower back. So you're dropping your ribs, keeping everything engaged. So I did, um, I can't remember, maybe like 10 per leg and then uh, superset that with uh, crunches with the kettlebells. That's what I did. So just crunching up towards the ceiling, exhaling, driving up, really engaging those upper abs. Um, and trying to keep my lower body somewhat relaxed. So hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have suggestions on how I can make these more valuable for you, please let me know. Um, like I said, I'm going to do more videos like this if you guys want them. And uh, yeah, let's all get through this together, guys. Again, if you have any, any tips, any suggestions, I'm happy to hear it. So thanks again, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys, workout is done. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's nowhere near what you're going to get at a regular gym that's fully equipped with all your dumbbells and your machines. But in the situation that we're in, we're going to make the best of it. A couple bands, a couple kettlebells, and really, you can get most stuff done. Overall, for the workout, a couple different exercises for back, a couple exercises for chest, a little bit of shoulder isolation, superset, bicep and tricep, finish off with some core, pretty good workout. That took about 30, 45 minutes total by the time you factor in rest periods and you know supersets and that kind of stuff. So by all means, add more if you feel like it, adjust things as you need to. This is just an overall example you guys can use to kind of structure your workouts. And this is kind of something that I'll probably follow when I need to train at home. So again, I hope you guys like the video. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more of these home workouts. We'll definitely be doing another one for sure for lower body. And then if more people want to see uh, different stuff, we can do like upper body version two, lower body version two, or whatever you guys want to see. So be sure to let me know. Follow me on Instagram. That's where I'm the most active. That's where you guys can get in touch with me easily. I know a lot of my followers are now following this YouTube channel. So if you guys have suggestions, what you want to see in videos, then send me a message on Instagram. Reminder, it's at Leroy underscore Rollins underscore fitness. And I'll see you guys in the next one.